one game left and it is for all the marbles. I'm Greg Ellis with Coach Ty Harden. This is Gridiron Takes. Startable Thursday night on the blue turf at seven o'clock. The winner gets the division crown. If it's Tupelo, it's back to back. Yep, um, doesn't get any big, bigger. Told our None guys, told our guys yesterday at practice, what did they expect, you know? I think they expected to be here. They expected this would be the game at the end of the season. Um, I would say Starkville did too. So, uh, you know, it's you couldn't script it any better. That's what everybody expected. Um, and, you know, now it's, now it's here. It's here. Both teams have had a few bumps along the way that probably weren't expected, but have rebounded, and here we are. This is one of Tupelo's biggest, if not biggest, rivalries, and it got renewed really well last year. Of course, we go to Startville and, and win, and then they come here, and, and what, just a great football game and get us at the end to go on to the state championship. Do you use that as any motivation, or is that like that's been so long ago? I mean, that's a, that's, that's got to be self motivation. Self motivation. You know, I mean, I, I mean that's our guys. You know, I, so I told them first thing when we met this week and or last week. I said, do, guys, do I have to let y'all know who our opponent is this Friday? Um, you know, do I have to give you the storyline? Right. Do I have to remind you of November twenty fourth, twenty eighth, whatever? Um, I mean, you know, our guys, our guys have been playing against them since they're in Pee Wee middle school, you know. Uh, this senior class played them for like a championship in, in middle school back in the day. And, um, you know, it's just, it, it, it's, it shouldn't, it, it is, it is, Tupelo and Star was their biggest rival for each other. I mean, they don't, they don't like each other. It's right. pretty simple. Um, and it's in every sport. Um, it's, 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 and I do think, you know, you got the two best teams definitely in North Mississippi, might be the two best teams in the state of Mississippi. Um, and everybody knows this might not be the last time we play each other also. Right. So, um, it, it, it's, there's a lot of, there's a lot into this game. Um, and, you know, good or bad, uh, I can see both teams playing each other in the future too. Uh, I think that's, that, that, that's a great probability of that. Hey, it happened last year. Uh, the only difference was this wasn't the regular season finale last right. year. So since we last met, we got a big win against Clinton, and you had an open date. How did you use that open date? We used the open date to get hit, to heal, um, to fix our issues. You know, we didn't look good in the Clinton game. I mean, it it is what it is. We didn't get off the bus till probably halftime. Um, fix a lot of those issues that we saw were glaring issues and maybe reoccurring issues from the season. Heal and uh, just and, and start prepping a little bit for Starkville. Um, we didn't prep for him as much. We have obviously all this week, but we did at the end of la end of last week. We gave him two days off of just wait some film, and then three days we're on the field and we got him off at home at the Bell every day, uh, just to get them refreshed. And I saw him Monday coming in practice, it was kind of a little pep in their step, bounce, and not you know. Not dragging in right. or anything. They weren't tired. Right. So it uh, has been a long season. I mean, it's been a long it's a grind. It's been a long season, um, and it's a lot of them even said that first day of practice, like, "Coach, man, it feels like it's been forever since we played, <laughs> or it feels like forever since we practiced." Uh, and which is that don't bother me. You know, right. I want them to guy. Right. I want those guys to be a little hungry and be be ready. It does feel like forever since we we have played. Looking ahead to start, well, we know everything evolves around Petty, their quarterback. He is a phenomenal athlete. What else besides him makes that offense click? Well, they've probably got the best receiver in the state of Mississippi, too, and Stonka Burnside. Um, he's a kid that can do anything. Um, he plays both ways. He's going to play some safety. He's going to play receiver. They'll put him in the backfield, give him the ball. He's a guy that, you know, he's – He's an SEC talent for a reason. Right. Committed to an SEC school for a reason. Um, they've got two running backs that are really good running back. They had a kid that transferred in that's a big, powerful running back that can leave you. Um, he's a really, really good player. They're so good. I mean, they're so good. They're so explosive on offense. It's, you know, they're the, the most explosive. T by far the best team we've played this season. Right. Um, and, and especially can say on offense, the most explosive team. Uh, when you got a quarterback like Petty, the uh, best quarterback in the state, one of the best quarterbacks in the state, we like to argue about our guy. Um, he, he makes it, but they're totally different players. Uh, he makes plays, Mahomes-esque, 
uh, good at ad-libbing. Uh, I can see why every college drools over him. Um, can't he's got, lose containment. Can't lose containment, and he's got guys he can throw to. I mean, right. they, <clears throat> they, play, they play the definition of basketball on grass. <clears throat> They're really fast. They can go left, right, up and down, diagonal, whatever. They can, you know, they can do it. There's a reason why they won the state last year, and they got most of those guys on offense back. Mm -hmm. If there is a, and I don't want to say a weak point, but their defense isn't as stout as it was last year, but they're still pretty good. They, yeah, they, they, they I'll say they improved from their off week to their last game against Madison. They've improved light years. Um, yeah, they, they, took, they put a good whipping on they Madison. They did. They put a good whipping on Madison. Um, but I also do, I do, I, I do think. And I've said it five million times, it's so tough playing on the road in our division. I think you saw how we played at Clinton. Every coach in our division will agree, like something something about getting on that bus for, you know, I think for the long trips. Right. Um, for sure. But, you know, they, they, they've improved a lot on defense. Early on in the season, they were not good, not good at stopping the run. And, uh, you know, we've got a – you know, we've got a good offense, and we feel like we can make some plays and expose them in some areas, and that's what we got to do. you talking about Starkville improving. Uh, there's no question our offense, defense, and special teams have improved um, very well over the last several weeks. What have been the – let's look at offense first. What have been the keys to the offense here in the last several games? Well, I th we told you from the beginning of the season how much the defense was going to improve and the offensive line. I've seen the offensive line take leaps and bounds. We were bigger last year on the <clears throat> offensive line, but we're more physical this year. Kind of, it's kind of crazy. Um, we're more physical, we're good at, we're better at getting, like, it, I, you know, we got some guys that are just some guys that, that, that are downright getting nasty and dirty down there, and I love it. And, which is uh, what you want on your line. Which is what we want. Um, they, they, get in, they get into bodies and they're nasty once they get there. I think that group, it's kind of solidified themselves and it's made everybody else confident. I think the emergence of us letting Jeremiah run the ball a little bit, I mean, that gives us another element of our offense and it opens up a lot of other things. And we know what we've got at running back and receiver. Right. We know what we got right there. And your, but your receivers have really stepped up big in the well, last Well, we episode. also flipped some positions. Right. We put Tyreek to the single receiver side and we put Braylon Matthews to the, um, you know, uh, formation side. And those two guys have flew in, in, in those roles, you know. Um, and so that, that, that's helped a lot, and I think it's just made our offense better. Uh, and you can tell our offense is – they're confident. You know, you got the big names on defense, but, Coach, there are so many playmakers on defense. that, And it, it seems to be different guys to step up at different key moments of the game. Well, against Clinton, we – like I said, we didn't get off the bus till halftime. They also – you could tell I wasn't happy going into halftime or after the game period. Um, Clinton did something that they hadn't that, – that quarterback had not played all season. Uh, and he came in and we had a feeling that he was going to play. Gave um, them their spark back. Gave, gave them a spark back. Uh, and, you know, he did what he was supposed to do. We, we, did, not, we did not prepare all week for that. Um, well, that's our fault. And, but we kind of challenged our guys at halftime. It starts with our D-line. I think our, our D line can take over any football game. When when our, when when Hunt and Tart and Kate and Jeraylin and Mike take over games, it's it. That's it. And that's what, and, and and Coach Kilgore told him at halftime. I said, "This is going to come down to y'all. If y'all want to take this game over, we'll go out and beat these guys' tails." And that's what they did. Um, they took the game over second half. Uh, we need those guys to be great. Um, but we still got some areas to improve. We know our linebacker crews, the, uh, the area that's uh, one of the, you know, it's, it's got a lot of talent in it. Our, our DB group, it, we shuffle it around a lot. Well, we shuffle it around for this week. Um, you know, and just those, those guys got to go out and make plays also. Thursday night is also senior night. Um, it's a big game for that. Uh, uh, emotional, do you, have to, do you have to talk a little bit about that? Hey, it's an emotional night. But remember, we still have a game. Right. To play, I mean, and I think our guys know that we have a game. Game. Uh, Self-explanatory. That the game's more important than right. the uh, senior night. Um, and that hey, we'll you know we'll recognize you for the game, but hey, we'll definitely recognize you after the game after you win. That's right. You know, with the division championship. That's right. <laughs> well, coach, um, 
Tuesday night was Halloween, mm -hmm. and uh, we know it's one of your favorite favorite holidays of the year. So, uh, how, how did that go for your household? Uh, it's it's going to be great. We uh, we had our family, our whole family over. Uh, we did Aladdin theme this year, so uh, uh, I was Aladdin. Uh, my daughter was. Uh, whatever her name is, <laughs> and uh, our whole family did it. Uh, you'll probably see pictures of it somewhere. Um, you know, we uh, did it big, uh, it was a little cold, so, you know, uh, it was fun. We always, we, we always love it. We've, we've, we've took so many, we started all Friday night all the way to Tuesday of nonstop Halloween. Yeah, we go from 84 to 44 That's in right. one day. <laughs> and then back to 80 next Monday. <laughs> yeah. How about Mississippi that? weather. Mississippi weather. Well, Coach, I am so excited for Thursday night. It's, this is what it's all about. I mean, this is Mississippi football at its finest. Get your tickets now. You don't want to wait. It's going to be a packed house. It's going to be a great crowd. It is startful. That's all that needs to be said. Good luck. And uh, we will be back next week for the first round of the playoffs. For Coach Harden, I'm Greg Ellis. This is Great Iron Tate.